Lockdown is a great episode, and it picks up right where we left off. Locke and Jack get annoyed with Henry. Jack heads off to the beach, and Locke tosses the captive right back into the armory. Said, Charlie, and Anna are over here, in a big open field, searching for Henry Gale's balloon. They are searching for three hours. Why isn't it raining? They find it, as well as the grave. What we have from Henry Gale's story is what the fake Henry Gale has told us, what we get from his dollar bill, and the balloon. The name Henry Gale is a reference to Dorothy's uncle in The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Uncle Henry, you won't let her, will you? <laughs> of course we won't. Uh, where we am? Which has been referenced a lot on the show. You are the man behind the curtain. The Wizard of Oz. On this show, Henry Gale might have been inspired or even related to a man named George Gale, a balloonist who died in 1850. And he continued in the same field. We see that the organizations that sponsored his race was Mr. Klux, Nozala Cola, Minnesota Metallurgy, and Widmore Labs. Some Lost fans have theorized that Henry Gale worked for Charles Widmore, since Widmore Labs was one of the several sponsors seen here. Could this be one of Widmore's attempts to find the island? If Ben saw the sticker for Minnesota Metallurgy, which was part of his alibi, he likely spotted the sticker for Widmore, his nemesis. Everything is up to the viewer. Henry Gale is not revisited in the show after this episode. We won't even see more from Said, Anna and Charlie until the end of the episode, but in an off screen scene we'll have Said digging up the grave. It's containing the body of a male, not a female, the real Henry Gale. The rain and thunder on this day might drown the noise of an airplane, because on this day an airplane will fly over the island with a food drop. It will go right over here and drop a pallet of food near the swan station, and maybe even drop pallets of food other places on the island. Said, Anna and Charlie will now hurry back to the rest of the group, likely going down this valley instead of following the map. Early. You seen Anna Lucia? She took off into the jungle with Charlie and Said yesterday. Yesterday. Jack goes to the beach and joins in on a poker game. Locke lets out his frustrations with a bit of training. He's on the exercise bike and hears noises from the speakers in the swan announcing a lockdown. We can't hear it. He's getting some tools, trying to adjust the speakers. He's cut off from the swan computer, where the blast doors in the swan station come down here, 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 and even behind here, which is weird, but I guess Dharma installed blast doors here? Locke agrees to protect Henry in return for help in raising one of the lockdown doors. However, Locke gets trapped under the door. The lockdown is a brilliant idea to further protect the station from the hostiles, since it seals off both the living quarters and the computer dome. However, the lockdown process is a little longer than what we saw. It has a 20 minute warning. But the equipment is old, so Locke doesn't hear the entire message. Since it's a two man job, it could mean that in the 20 minute head start, when they hear please proceed for a lockdown procedure or something like that. One of the occupants would stay in the computer dome, while the other brought out the hazmat suit to go outside the airlock vent. In the time the place is under lockdown, he could venture out and grab all the supplies. By the time the Dharma worker brought everything to the outside of the blast door at the airlock, the blast doors would go up and they could restock the pantry. In addition, the UV lights would turn on. UV lights are extremely effective at killing bacteria and viruses. UVA and UVB can be used to kill bacteria, mold, and fungus. But what separates UVC apart is its ability to also kill viruses. Scan anything for 10 seconds with this safe and healthy disinfecting UV light and kill 99.9% .9 of viruses and harmful bacteria on the surface. UVC light is an excellent and powerful tool for disinfecting and killing bacteria and viruses. Its biggest limitation is that it only works in line of sight. The technology works by using a specific wavelength of UVC light. The light actually penetrates 
the outer shell of the virus or the bacteria and actually denatures the DNA or RNA helix within, causing the virus or bacteria to die, but also inhibiting any further breeding. Which would be necessary precaution when going in and out of the station. Charlie mentions in the next episode that there is a connection between the lockdown and the food drop. Back to the episode. Locke tells Henry about the computer and asks him to climb through the grate and into the ventilation shaft. You can see here how little food there is. Good thing there he is talking. He climbs through the ventilation system in the pantry to get to the computer. We saw Kate do the same thing in Adrift and managed to get to the computer dome. He does the same thing off screen, takes off the grate and then enters the numbers right as the hieroglyphics began flipping. You can listen and hear the station powering up so the hieroglyphics started to show up. But you know that you can still type in the code when they are flipping down. We don't know if he activated the UV lights, but I think it's automatically tied to the lockdown. As I mentioned with the UV lights and people going in and out of the station. He goes back into the ventilation shaft, back to the pantry. Locke sees the amazing blaster map for a few seconds. And then crawl to the computer dome. Henry meets him there, the timer went back to 108. The blaster map is such an enormous topic and while writing the script for it, I realized that it should be a separate video. Sorry, it's just too enormous. This is why this video is titled part one. Guess it was enough, huh? Son of a bitch. Jack has won, the medicines at poker and heads back to the swan station. Kate comes by and they find the food drop over here. Parachute. Said, Ana Lucia and Charlie are back, back in the swan station. Henry helps Locke to the living area, tells what he did and then is greeted by Said. We found that there was not a woman inside, there was a man. A man named Enrique. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Next episode will be a special, solely on the Blastor map. It has been one of my favorites to write the script for, and I'm very much looking forward to sharing my thoughts on it. The next video will be, without a doubt, the longest video I've made. I'm gonna pinpoint all the locations on that map, like the Dharma stations, even that unknown meteorology station we never saw, and all the underground vents and where they are on the island, while trying to explain everything that is worth mentioning, like the timeline of all the things happening on the island. I'm really looking forward to releasing it. See you in a week.